Okay, I'm excited for this one. So, <laughs> the fusion page in DaVinci Resolve. You know it, you love it, or uh, you know it and you hate it, or it's just so confusing, you don't even bother. I really, really love the Fusion page, and I'm convinced that it is honestly the secret to a lot of the power you're gonna see in DaVinci Resolve going forward. And that is all thanks to the powerful systems that are in place to uh, take something you create in the Fusion page and use it on the edit page. Almost anything you make in the Fusion page, from uh, titles and transitions and uh, effects and generators, you can package up and save as a drag and drop preset on the edit page. And a lot of the included titles and transitions and effects on the edit page that come, you know, free and resolve are actually just fusion effects that use that same system. And you can actually open up a lot of those and see exactly how they were built in the fusion page. That's all very cool. And in this video, I want to show off one of those included free presets and how it demonstrates some of the wild, wild power of the fusion page. And while this video will get pretty complex in some areas, I chose this specific preset to look at because it, the first time I opened it up, it really blew my mind. L let me explain. Here on my timeline, I have my proto energy effect. And if I click this button and I can open that in the fusion page and uh, you see proto is just this one little group of nodes. But if I double click to open that up, you see, okay, there's a lot of nodes. There's a lot of stuff going on. This is way too much for anyone diving into the fusion page. But Check this out. I am gonna to go to my effects library. I'm gonna to come to generators and I'm going to scroll to fusion generators. And the first one you should see here is contours. This by itself is a super cool effect. Look, I'll drag it to my timeline and we have these little like nice little waves at the bottom of the screen. But in the inspector, you have this version control. And as I click through these version controls, the look of this effect drastically changes. We have all these different looks ending on this cool little bullseye. I really like this number three a lot. It's sort of like this topological map. If you turn up this movement rate, then it even, you know, sort of like undulates throughout the scene. I use this as a like a background all the time in my videos when I need to uh, show off like an old clip or a picture or something. I'll scale that down a bit and just have this like going off in the background. It's pretty cool. And for as complicated as this seems and as many different looks that are baked in here, you might think the node tree is pretty wild, but we're going to click that same button, open it in the fusion page. We have that same group. And when I open that group, this entire effect, it's four nodes. These four nodes can give you drastically different looks. Now, a lot of the power of this specific effect uh, comes from these version controls, and that's a whole other system that I'm gonna walk through in uh, a separate video. I'm gonna walk through you know, how to set that up, but all you need to know is that these different versions, the only things they can change um, are these published controls. But in this video, what I wanna talk about is just the general idea of, hey, these four nodes, if you just change the settings on them, you can create wildly different looks. This is the power of nodes. I found this a little while ago and I, I knew it was cool, but I recently started diving into like specifically some of what is going on and learned so much. There's some really, really intense stuff. It's gonna get a little deep. It's gonna get a little technical, but it's so, so cool. And even if you aren't uh, going that extra step of making like presets and templates, hopefully there'll be some really, really great stuff in here just about building uh, effects in the Fusion page in general. Let's begin walking through exactly what these four nodes are doing. Right at the uh, beginning of this chain, we have the fast noise node. Fast noise, if you're coming from After Effects, fractal noise uh, is just like creating all of these random patterns. Let's make a new fast noise over here. And you can see uh, you got this sort of cloudy texture. If I pull up or down scale, you'll see what's going on. Up or down contrast and seethe will get you that random motion. Fast noise, like fractal noise, is used all over the place and it's used to, to uh, uh, really cool uses here. <laughs> okay, back to our effect. We have fractal noise and you'll see, hey, it's just sort of got this, you know, white edge on the bottom, a little bit of a line. The seethe rate is up just a little bit, so this just sort of fluctuates over time. And if you compare that to the final effect, you'll see, okay, that's sort of driving this first little line we got here. That is being piped into the blue mask input of this background node, which gets us this first copy of this line, just wiggling around the bottom. That is going into a shadow node, which if I zoom in, you'll see, hey, that gives me a nice little drop shadow on that. 
And then uh, we're going to go back to some of these because there's, there's still some wild stuff going on. But then we have a duplicate node. And if I preview that, you can see this is doing lots of stuff. It's giving us the rest of these copies. This is set to five copies. If I open this up to something like 10 copies, you'll see uh, that continues. It about goes as far, but you'll notice really importantly that color gradient is, uh, it doesn't go further. If I go back to five, you'll see it ends at this dark color. And if I set that all the way up to 10, it still ends at that dark color, but there are more steps in between. So that goes along the duplicate node. Uh, can be a bit of a chunky node, but uh, it's worth it for some effects like this. Now you might think, hey, that is straightforward enough. You have one copy and then you duplicate it and you know move it and change the color. But <laughs> not all those tools are available in the duplicate node. This is actually working in conjunction with some pretty, pretty wild stuff happening on this background node. And hey, if this is really deep and technical and in the weeds for you, good news. There are so many other videos on my channel you can go and check out, including videos about some of the dozens of free presets I have made for DaVinci Resolve, including that one I showed off Proto. So hey, if you need to click away, click away is somewhere fun. But if you don't, I think this is really fun. Let's keep going. <laughs> Some of the keen-eyed among you might have noticed this time offset. Uh, control has some really funky stuff going on. Now I am going to walk through this, and while I understand what is happening, I don't completely understand why. So that's fun, but let's show it off. Now this time offset deals in frames. Normally if you have an object moving, you use this time offset for all the copies, and those will be pushed uh, in time by that amount of frames but you'll see this is just set to an offset of 0.1, and that is because of inside this expression, we have one divided by copies. So we are pushing each of these by, uh, I believe, a 10th of a frame, which normally sh shouldn't be anything. But uh, <laughs> back on this background node, you see we just have one copy, right? And it does its one thing. But if you look, uh, this shape on this background has all these it looks like keyframes and that actually has been modified bought it by a modifier if i click on modifiers we have the gradient color modifier and now this looks kind of familiar because this is actually the gradient that is running the whole effect if i come in here change this uh, black color to something like green it will end at that green instead that looks gross <laughs> so we have a whole gradient but if we preview that specific node we're only seeing one color and that is because of these time controls now normally you would set these to something custom like okay start at frame zero end at frame one and over that course uh that background will cycle through your gradient of colors but we have more expressions here, uh, floor in time and ceiling time. And both of those do come up to the same frame, but floor meaning round down and ceiling meaning round up. I'm not sure how necessary the difference of those are or whether you could just like pull the same time for both of them. I think they're pretty necessary because <laughs> what this is saying is, okay, starting at the current frame, like these have the same number here, right? We're starting at the beginning of the frame and ending at the end of the frame. But again, it's only one frame, but we are running through this entire gradient. I had no idea this is how Fusion works, but Fusion keeps track of things inside one frame, right? So for each frame, it's cycling through these colors, but you only ever see the beginning of that color. But when we get to that duplicate, we are suddenly offsetting those in time by a 10th of a frame. So now if we were to cut that gradient up by tenths, each new duplicate uh, gets the color data from that tenth of a frame later in this gradient for every frame. Whoa! <laughs> I absolutely get that this is pretty wild stuff. This is very, very wild stuff for me. So if this is a lot, that's okay. We're along for the ride. This is just, a, you know, a free included drag and drop preset. And it's doing some really, really cool stuff. And somehow that's not all. Because you'll notice it isn't just changing color. It's also uh, like extending the mask. It's a little harder to see on this one. If I hop over to this one, I like three, you'll see a little what's going on. Um, this one has a really slight gradient from this slightly more yellow to like more solid white. But this isn't just like pushed vertically, like the first one looks a little bit more like. Um, this actually like naturally decreases and expands. If I check out the background for this, we see, oh, we just have these shapes. But when it comes to the duplicate, we have this one shape here and then like in a shape outline, and then it goes a little bit more, a little bit more, and then they connect to other shapes. What is the next layer of stuff going on here? Let me hop over to version one to demonstrate on a, on a slightly cleaner frame. Okay, so uh, that gradient 
funky inter frame stuff that was happening on the background something close to that is happening on the fast noise itself if i preview the fast noise head over to color you'll notice that this is also a gradient on the fast noise it has a start and end point and if you're in fusion you'll see those in frame depicted with this line here and you can change you see over that line, it's where it's fading from white to black. Now you can also sort of see this if I had just go to the background except with color. So I'm previewing the background, but if I go back to controls of the fast noise, you can see uh, this gradient here. If I pull the end of this gradient, nothing happens. If I pull the beginning of this gradient, you'll see now it is being pushed forward. So sort of like where the background gradient was going from what we said was the beginning and the end of the frame, this is sort of the inverse of that. So this initial layer is sort of at this black point here to where if I pull up the starting white point, you'll see if I preview the fast noise, it is pushing that wider area further up. Cool. Now, I believe the other important settings are that this repeat is set to once and the offset is set to zero. You see, if I pull up this offset, you'll see it is pushing the entire thing up we want that at zero. So I believe since this is repeating with zero offset, it is sort of doing that same repeating gradient every frame as well. So these sort of work uh, using the same expression on the time set to where as that is changing the color, it is also pushing the gradient a little bit further. So it isn't just duplicating that, it is uh, pushing the gradient. Uh, so it is further increased by those waves in an organic way. If you are a fusion genius or expression or fast noise genius, and I'm messing up some small part of this, uh, let me know, but I believe we're walking through some stuff in an interesting way. And as wild as all that is, that same process is being used for different effects on all of these different versions. Some like this too gets this like really cool kind of like grid paper. Um, there's no motion here. And even if you pulled up, that movement rate, I don't believe it would, you know, do anything because these are just straight lines. If I pull up the fast noise, you'll see this is just a normal gradient and the background comes to just this line. But as the shadow repeats that, we get some cool stuff. Even on this last one, this bullseye, pretty cool. All these colors, again, happening on the gradient, on that background, and then this position here, which here is just labeled as position, is actually changing the offset on this gradient on the fast noise wild see it's just like a blurred out gradient you make it a circle you make it a little drop shadow duplicate gets you all of these colors almost out of nowhere because they're all happening within a frame as it expands Oh, I haven't touched on a lot of stuff in Fusion uh, as deep as this goes and showing off some of those expressions uh, is pretty wild. But my purpose, honestly, to sort of overwhelm in a good way. Fusion is so powerful and you can do a whole lot with, you know, four nodes. You don't need to over engineer things. It's very, very easy to over engineer things in Fusion. I'd love to talk about some more of, you know, the hidden Fusion secrets included in the free uh, presets you get inside Resolve. Um, if you want some more of that, if you want some more of this, just let let me know. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.